Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Tuesday, January 11th, and this is the NBA DFS video for today. So in today's video, we'll be going over a recap of yesterday's picks, seeing how they turned out, talking about the injuries and play for tonight's slate, and then talking about my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for tonight's slate as well. But without further ado, we'll get into it with a recap of yesterday's picks. So we're going to start off on the DraftKings side. First off, we had Anthony Simons, $6,400, looking for 32 points on me, got to 48, so he was a hit once again. Very, very good night for him once again, though. And then Ben McLemore, my boy, $3,300, looking for 16, 17 points on me, got to 33.75. Chauncey Billups finally let him play bigger minutes last night, and he paid off with a 10 times value on yesterday's slate. Then small four, we had Lonnie Walker, $4,200, looking for 21 points on me, got to 25, so he was a hit. Probably could have been an even better hit if that game was not a blowout. And then at power four, we had Jay Sean Tate. Unfortunately, Daniel Tice did end up in the starting lineup, starting at the four, pushing Tate down to the three, which kind of affects his rebounding totals and stuff like that. But we were looking for 26 points on him, got to 16.25. He only played 25 minutes, and this game was a blowout, so kind of a miss. If he plays a couple more minutes, probably gets closer to what we were looking for yesterday. And then last but not least, we had Joseph Nurkic, $7,000, looking for 35 points on him. He got to 29.5. He was a mess yesterday. Didn't shoot the ball particularly well for a big man, and then he just didn't do a whole heck of a lot otherwise. So uh, kind of a fortunate miss, but hopefully one that didn't kill you overall yesterday. So we were 3 out of 5 on the DraftKings side. Not a bad day. There was a couple good hits there, but a couple misses as well. And then on the FanDuel side, we had Tyrese Halliburton, $6,800, looking for 34 points out. He got to 44.4, so he was a good hit. And then we have Ben McLemore once again, $3,900, looking for 19, 20 points out. He got to 33, so once again, he was a hit. At small forward, I had Harrison Barnes, $5,000, you know, a pay down price for him, looking for 25 points out. He got to 23.6, so he was a miss. He mainly just scored the ball yesterday, not a lot of other stats, you know, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, anything like that. So unfortunately, he was a miss, but not one that killed you overall. Then Bobby Porter, $6,000, we're looking for 30 points out. He'd been playing very, very well. He had 19 point. Two points last night. He was a mess. He was two for seven shooting from the field. Just didn't do a whole heck of a lot besides rebound the ball yesterday. So just kind of unfortunate, especially given how well he was playing and the fact that he did end up playing 35 minutes last night. And then last but not least, we had Jakob Pertl, $6,100, looking for 31 points on him, got to 31 and a half, so he was a hit as well. So three out of five on the Fandle side as well. A little bit of a hit or miss day, but we did have some good hits as well. But with that being said, we'll get moved over into the injuries and in play for tonight's slate. So I believe this is a six-game slate. Where once again, we're starting at 7 o'clock, then we got a 7.30, a couple 8 o'clock games, and then the one late game at 10.30. So. so the start times are pretty close together, at least early on, and then we do have that one late game once again. So we're going to start off with the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are without Kenrich Williams. Isaiah Roby lists his game time decision. We'll see if he's back tonight or not. For the Washington Wizards, they're without Thomas Bryant. Anthony Gill's questionable, and Tremont Waters is a game time decision. So pretty healthy at this point in time. Last time out, we did see the return of Rui Hachimuri. He only played about like 14 to 16 minutes last time out. Expect him to slowly, slowly start bumping up minutes. It'll be really interesting to see where his minutes kind of come, who he eats away from, whether it's Kyle Kuzma, Daniel Gafford, Montrose Harrell, guys like that. So uh, very, very interested to see how that all plays out in the coming weeks. Then we move over to the Phoenix Suns, who are without Justin Jackson, Cam Johnson, Frank Kaminsky, Abdul Nader, Dario Sarge, and Isaiah Wainwright. So the new ones here are going to be Wainwright and Johnson. Johnson's obviously the biggest one since he had been playing rather well. Uh, he returned to the bench roll last time out with Jay Crowder returning, so Jay Crowder probably looking a little bit better tonight overall. Landry Shamet listed as a game time decision. We'll see if he's back tonight or not. Then for the Toronto Raptors, they're without Gordon Dragic once again. Gary Trent, who was a late scratch last time out, is questionable, and Scotty Barnes is also questionable. So it could be a little bit of value on this Raptors team tonight if both those guys do end up missing. For the Timberwolves, Balmaro is out once again. Beverly's questionable. He has missed the last two times out. On the Pelican side, Zion Williamson out once again. And then D.D. Lozana is listed as a game time decision. We'll see if he's back tonight or not. Moving down to the Bulls and the Pistons. The Bulls are without Jeremy Grant and Kelly Olenek once again. Isaiah Livers, Frank Jackson, and Bull Bull are all this is game time decisions. We'll see if they get any of those three players back tonight. Chicago Bulls are without Alex Caruso, Tyler Cook, Javante Green, and Patrick Williams. So no major changes there at this point in time. And the Golden State Warriors are without James Wiseman once again. And then now Draymond Green missing again with that calf injury. He did barely, barely play the last time out. Otto Porter Jr. and Gary Payton are both listed as questionable. We'll see if they end up playing tonight or not. Then for the Memphis Grizzlies, Dylan Brooks is out. Sounds like he's going to be out for a little while now. And then Steven Adams is listed as questionable. Yi Pons is a game time decision. So could be a little bit of value there once again. Just really depends on if Steven Adams is back tonight or not. 
Then for the Denver Nuggets, they were without Will Barton, Kan Carr, Marcus Howard, and Jamal Murray. Rodney Magruder, who they just traded for, listed as a game time decision. We'll see if he ends up playing tonight or not. But obviously, the big one there is going to be Will Barton. So it's kind of safe to assume that Austin Rivers rejoins the starting lineup once again. And then on the Clippers side, we have Paul George, Isaiah Hartenstein, Luke Kennard, Kawhi Leonard, Jay Preston, and Justice Winslow. All this is out. I believe Winslow is the newest one on that list. So. He was kind of playing a depth role anyways, not a major piece there, but could change a couple, you know, could give a couple other guys a couple of minutes as well. But we'll see if their starting lineup remains the same as the last two games where Amir Coffey was in the starting lineup. Terrence Mann was coming off the bench. Definitely interesting there. Could be a little bit of value on the Clippers team, just depending on the news throughout the day, though. But with that being said, that's a quick, quick look at the injuries and in play for tonight's slate. Not a lot of stuff going on right now, but a lot of these ones that are questionable could make a big difference on the slate in terms of value since it is a very, very, very tightly priced slate tonight. So uh, you'll see that in the core picks as well. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to DraftKings and I'll talk about my picks over there. So we're going to start off with Monte Morris, $4,700. Looking for about 23, 24 points out. He's averaging 24 and a half on the season. Got projected for about 23, 24 points tonight. Obviously, he's been back for a couple games now. So do expect him to do a little bit better without Will Barton out once again tonight. And then at shooting guard, we're going to go with Lou Dort. $5,200 looking for about 26 points at him. He's averaging about 27 on the season. I got him projected for about 26 tonight. He's been back for two games now. He's played reasonably well. So at a shooting guard position where there's not a ton of value, at least early on today, Lou Dort looks like an all right value overall. Then at small four, we have Nick Batum, $4,300, looking for 21, 22 points at him. Played 30 minutes the last time out. Assume he's going to play pretty decent sized minutes once again today. Playing a little bit better as of late. He's really just trying to get back into form since, you know, he played a little bit at the beginning of the year and missed quite a bit of time now coming back as well. So, but with that being said, I currently have him projected for about 22 points tonight. Has a little bit upside for more. Might have a little bit downside for less as well. But if he's out there, if he's playing the minutes, if he's playing reasonably well, should pay off for this price tag. Then at Power 4, this is one that could change throughout the day too as well. Most of these ones could change throughout the day just depending on any, if any other value does open up throughout the day. But Kyle Anderson at $5,000. We've seen him play very, very well the last time out. At $5,000, we're looking for 25 points out. Currently have him projected for 26 points tonight. If he's in that starting lineup again, getting big minutes should definitely pay off for this price tag once again. However, if he's not in that starting lineup, we might want to look a different direction. Then last but not least, at the center position, we're going to go with Kevon Looney. $4,800, looking for 24 points at him. And I know what you're thinking. You see that 19 points there per game. And you're like, Craig, what are you thinking? Well, he was over 40 last time out, had big rebounding numbers. He's going to play more minutes without Draymond Green in the lineup. Should be valuable once again tonight. And I do have him currently projected for about 25, 26 points tonight. But with that being said, if you go with these five players, you have $26,000 remaining. Just over $8,600 per player. So you can definitely pay up for a stud if that's something you want to do. Maybe even two in a really cheap value play or take a little bit more balanced approach. That's definitely something that could pan out on tonight's slate as well. Definitely a lot of options out there. Hopefully you get a couple other value options that do up and up throughout the day because there's not a ton of value there right now. Like I mentioned, the pricing is very, very tight on tonight's slate. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to Fandle and talk about my picks over there as well. So we're going to start off at the point guard position. We're going to start off with Cade Cunningham, $6,500. Looking for 33 points out, essentially what he's been averaging on the season. Coming off a very, very good light game last night. Prior to that, had not been shooting the ball the best. If we can catch fire and get him two nights in a row, definitely going to pay off at that $6,500 price tag. And with that being said, I currently have him projected for about 34 points tonight. Definitely has some upside for more if he's playing well, like we saw last night as well. Then at shooting guard, this was a very tough one because there was not a ton of value here. I'm going to go with Josh Giddy, $6,600, a little bit more than I like to pay for Josh Giddy. Looking for 33 points, Adam, averaging about 31 on the season. Currently have him projected for 33 points tonight. He's been playing rather well. Been over that 33 points, you know, about three or four out of the last four or five games. So definitely have some upside there. Definitely interested in him, especially if this game remains tight. If it's not a blowout, then Josh Gay is going to be somebody that we're probably going to want in our lineups tonight. Then a small forward. Talked about him a little bit when we were going through the injuries. It's Jay Crowder, $4,100. Returned the last time out. Looking for about 20, 21 points at him. Got him projected for about 21 points tonight. Should see some more minutes with Cam Johnson missing. So Jay Crowder, a relatively safe value play on tonight's slate. And then we're going to go a little bit risky this time. It's Aaron Gordon. He had not been playing the best as of late, but $5,100. Looking for 25, 26 points out. He's averaging almost 26 on the season. No Will Barton once again tonight, so that should help Aaron Gordon out just a little bit. If he can kind of catch a little bit of fire tonight, definitely could pay off for a $5,100 price tag. And we know the upside that Aaron Gordon could have on any given night. Then last but not least, we do have Zubak 
who I haven't played in quite some time, it feels like, but $4,900. Looking for 24, 25 points. I'm averaging 25 points on the season. Currently, I've been projected for about 26, 27 points tonight. But with that being said, if you go with these five players on the FanDuel side, you have $32,800 remaining, $8,200 per player. So you can definitely pay up for two studs on tonight's slate and then kind of plug and play from there. Or if you want to do a little bit more balanced approach, that's perfectly fine as well. But with that being said, these are my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for today, January 11th. As always, if you have any questions related to NBA DFS, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Also, be sure to let me know your favorite player on tonight's slate, whether it's on FanDuel or DraftKings. If you want to talk some super draft, that's perfectly fine as well. JC Money Design and I will be going live right around 5 o'clock. That will be streaming over on his channel. I'll try and drop a link in the comments below for that as well. We're going to be talking some super draft main slate, which is also the super draft pro contest today as well. So if you're into super draft, if you're brand new to super draft and you want to check it out, if you're into NBA DFS on super draft, definitely be sure to check that out as well. We've been going over all the players in play, some dart throws, answering any questions that you guys have, as well as building a lineup over there. And then, as always, I'll be listing all the injury updates, COVID news, and starting lineups down in the comments below, as well as my updated core. Sometimes an hour before lock, sometimes about a half hour before lock. Yesterday, we got a little bit lucky because we didn't really have to update the core too much. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of news, at least early on, that we did know. So, But with that being said, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Definitely would appreciate it. It helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS, whether it's NBA or NFL, helping you with your fantasy football teams. As we get closer to the NFL draft, going to be talking some NFL draft prospects as well. And then with that being said, if you are new or current subscribers yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time we post up a new video. And like I've been saying, I post up daily NBA DFS videos just like this. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And then last but not least, special little shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. I truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Definitely means a lot to me and I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.